Got to have something for my kids to see. Okay. So he's going to do a clapper thing. Everybody can see me. Okay. Okay. Um, so I wanted to make a couple of announcements. Bonnie Morgan, would you stand up, please? Yay! Yay! And why are we clapping? We're clapping because, as you all know, the messenger passed away, and the Messenger Mountain News is our new local town newspaper. So. A true Topanga hero is born again. She's done a lot of stuff, so it's born again. But uh, in any case, it's going to first issue is January 26, and you can contact Bonnie for advertising and/or donations. Although I'm told it's free to everyone. All right. So tonight we're talking about the community house. We're all sitting here warm and dry and happy, fed. So uh, we're doing the history of the community house. Is Kelly Rockwell here? Come on up, Kelly. Let's give Kelly, who runs the community house, a big hand. Kelly. So I, I'm, I'm going to ask Kelly, she, I didn't ask her before, so I'm asking her right now on the spot to give a shameless plug for the community club. Oh, I'm happy to, I, have, I would be remiss if I didn't do that. I'm always happy to give a shameless plug for the community house. First, as we kick off the evening, I'd love to see a show of hands of all of the members of past boards who are present this evening. I know we have some past presidents, some past treasurer, a past treasurer. There's so many of you have been a major part of the history here not only of the house but also of, of Topanga and you all many of you know that without the support of our membership this house would not exist and we rely on the members to keep it going where I'm one just one of a group of volunteers who are the head of keeping or in charge of keeping the house going and we have um, added a whole lot of of new programs and, and events that will help us sustain the house, but we really can't do it without your support. So we've added a number of membership levels, and you'll hear more about that from me later. But um, if you would like to become a member or renew your membership or aren't really sure if you're still a member of the community house, you can reach out to myself or Bonnie this evening. Bonnie Morgan is wearing another hat as well, is that she is also our membership vice president, and she has made, we gone are the days of Excel spreadsheets, we have our membership system online now. So you can go in and log in and find out how when your membership expires, you can go on and check your calendar and see what events or classes you want to take and even sign up for events as well. So I would encourage you to visit the Topanga Community Club website, but if you prefer, we can check for you this evening as well. So um, please do become a member. It's vital to this to sustaining this wonderful house. And without further ado, let's learn more about our past. <laughs> okay, thank you. Now, I know you, you really want to hear the historians tell you about the community house, but I'm going to tell you my version, okay? In 1809, the covered wagons pulled up <laughs> with the vanity plate that said Donner on it, and uh, those people built the community house, okay? You can have dessert and go home now. It's all over. Um, so uh, where's Gail? Where's Gail? Would you stand up, please? You know who puts this whole thing on starting months and months ahead? Gail McToon McDonald. Four times a year she plans these things. She starts months, sometimes years ahead. The amount of work that goes into the programs is just incredible. And she just keeps pumping out great, great shows one after another. And, you know, she's, she's a one-woman tornado. 
and uh, she's, she is a Topanga treasure. Um, I want to thank our camera operators, who some who got way late. They thought they were coming for a dinner and a show, and now they're working. Uh, Oli, raise, raise your hand. Uh, Lori, raise your hand. And Chris, raise your hand. Thank you so much. Our sound guy, Scott, raise your hand. Thank you, Scott. Um, our, our, Gail, who's doing the introductions of the speaker in the program? Are you? Um, Ami. Ami. <laughs> you got a mic, Ami? You want to start? I want to introduce, everyone knows Ami Kirby, who is our archivist for a long time and a board member and uh, obviously is, is central to putting this together. Okay. Welcome. Shall I get, I'll talk in here, you can hear me. Uh, thank you, Gail. Uh, I, this is, Jan Moore is going to be our featured speaker. <laughs> and uh, Jan, Jan will tell you about herself when, when the time comes. Mm -hmm. And we have, Eric, you're going to speak? A little bit. A little bit. Our friend, Eric Dugdale, always pause over your last name. Eric Dugdale. <laughs> who is our archivist, and me, and who else is going to speak? Anybody else? Todd, who's going to speak? Todd Cleavert, who's a, a, also the archivist in the Historical Society. So these are the speakers right here before you. And I'm not exactly sure how we're going to start. I think maybe with me, with the slideshow. Yeah. Should we do it that way? Well, why don't I just introduce yeah. what's up there and then you go. Todd's going to introduce what's up there, and then I'm going to narrate a small little slideshow. Then Jan, then n next we're going to have a, um, a little movie, a 16-minute movie, a wonderful movie that Jan narrates. Then after that, Jan is going to speak, and after that, Eric's going to speak, so you'll, you'll hear a lot, and I think you'll enjoy it. So that's it. Oh yes, this is this peculiar thing. Hello? Hello. Oh, this is weird, I don't usually use these. Um, so I'm going to start this evening by discussing a newspaper article from the Messenger uh, about 1965, I believe, it made it in 66. Um, <laughs> yes. In fact, I'll just sit here to be much better. And hold the mic close to your mouth. Yeah. Like that. Like this. There you go. Hello, fellow Topangans. Yeah. <laughs> so I put up this newspaper article, and it discusses uh, the Strawberry Festival and the Queens and the Crowning and what happened during the course of, a, of the two-day weekend. Uh, with the Strawberry Festival in 1965, six, four, you guys know for sure? Probably not. It was Sanders. Was oh, her name. my yeah. neighbor, Shirley Sanders. Shirley yeah. Sanders was the Strawberry Queen that year, and this is actually the source for this. Mm -hmm. And when she sent it to me, I thought, hey, this is great. Shirley sent me some stuff. It's really interesting. But then tagged at the end of this article, I have a question. And, you know, as a historian, we kind of live off questions. Um, it gets into... Only mishap occurred Sunday when a 26-ton Nike Hercules missile from Fort MacArthur got stuck on a curve on the steep winding road leading to the community house grounds. <laughs> the truck trailer on which it was being transported finally was back down, and the missile was exhibited all day on the boulevard across from the community house. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> really. <laughs> So as I found this, it, it piqued my curiosity because that means up here, if I read it correctly, there's missiles underneath us, uh, or at least were. Uh, does anyone remember this event? Boy, is this true? Absolutely. Give him the microphone. Yeah, absolutely. Can you tell us a little bit about it, what you saw that day? Well, it started out with a uh, PTA at the school. That we were Near your mouth. We were a bunch of people that got together, <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> they started uh, what what we could do. So there was somewhere else that was a strawberry festival, and we said, "Why don't we try it up here?" 
and uh, we got together. Dan Moore was one of the people that was involved in that, and uh, started up the Strawberry Festival. Where did it actually stop on the road? Which road? On the boulevard. On the boulevard. It ended up on the boulevard. It, it, it ended up on the boulevard, but where did it all end up here? Remember, the were road... Oh, the, it was all here. The road at that time the came straight up from the boulevard through the, where the children's playground is. It, it's not the way it is now. Yeah. Oh! Okay. But it, it, it went up here, though. You could, you could get dive up here. And uh, this building was here with no roof on it, except the back end of it had a roof on it over there. And uh, this did have a little bit of a roof on it. But the mic up to your mouth. And, and then what we did, we started, uh, I was very involved in putting a stage in here. And then a couple of years later, we put a hot top on top of that. Excellent. Excellent. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> little by little, it got all cut off. Right. So the, the missile's not here anymore, though, right? Oh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> shot it. That's great. <laughs> It, yeah. it, it was a dummy anyway. <laughs> so were they stored up? Was there a launcher up here? It wasn't on its way up to the, the no. Nike base up there? No. 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 It's, a dummy. it's a dummy. It was a dummy. Yeah. It was a dummy. I remember when I was a Cub Scout up above Fernwood, we hiked around there where the Nike base was. Yeah. And they used to stop us on the trail and say, what are you guys doing here? We're going, walking on the trails. We're Boy Scouts and Cub Scouts. So, and they'd go, okay. But they had a fenced off area. But at the time, they were telling us that those Nike missiles were entirely for defensive purposes. In other words, they would shoot down incoming missiles that were headed for L.A. <laughs> Later on, we found out there were actually nuclear tips on those. Oh, jeez. Yeah, they were anti-fleet missiles, from what I understand. Anti-cruise missiles. And there was, there was, when we found out that it, there might have been one trying to come up here, we were looking at the old maps, and there was a Nike missile out off of Mulholland on the way to Tarzana. Um, so I'm wondering if they were taking a back road in Santa Maria or one of those roads, but uh, got lost. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, excellent. That was my query. That was my question. Oh yes, yes. The, uh, the, the Nike base closest to us is the one off the of Las Flores, which is now the fire uh, uh, station, uh, where they uh, uh, mass all the uh, vehicles for when we have a fire here. You can go visit that. We took the, the cops guys there once and. They got to ride the elevators that used to have the... Uh, oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. Fascinating. 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 I'm going to continue. I'm going to continue. Yeah. Yeah. And then the other thing I'd like to do to open this this uh, discussion is we have a guest tonight. He sent me an email, uh, curious about our archive today. His name is Jordan, and he's here with his lovely girlfriend, Lauren. Um, why don't you stand up, Jordan, and I'm going to hand you the mic, or you come up here, and um, you can tell us what you're uh, interested in. Sure. All right. I can talk. I've got to... No, no, no. No, no, use no, the mic. no, no. Use the mic. Use the mic. <laughs> Really bad advice all of it down here. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I'm working on a documentary. I've been working on it for about five years. It's about someone who lived here from about 56 to 61. His name is Bobby Driscoll, and he was the voice of Peter Pan in the original Disney cartoon, as well as the Treasure Island that was made in the 50s. And I'm just trying to uncover a little bit about his past and just what it's like here in Topanga around that time. Just why people flocked here. Lots of celebrities. I've interviewed some other people that have lived here. Um, Billy Gray, if any of you are familiar with him, as well as yeah. George Herms. So I'm just trying to get a little more history, and uh, you know, this seems like the right place to be. <laughs> and so yeah, if anybody would like to talk with me or do an interview that feels they have something to contribute, I'd love to hear them. What street was he on? I have no idea. I do not know where he lived just yet, because everybody's been giving me a few different places. He obviously was moving around a little bit. So I think he never stayed anywhere for a few months in this area. <laughs> the voice of Peter Pan. That's so thank you, Jordan. And if any of the old timers here want to give uh, Jordan a hand and, yes. and point out some connections, that'd be awesome. Thanks for showing up. So without further ado, Ami is going to tell us about some wonderful photos that we have in our archive. I'm going to have a little light here so I can refer to my notes. We're going to turn the lights off, or maybe how we going to do this. Oh, oh yes. Okay. 
Okay, good. Oh, okay, I'm all set. <laughs> yeah, we have a, a little slideshow to start off with about 10 or 11 photos. I'll make it quick because then we have the film and then Jan's going to speak, so I don't want to go overboard. But I had fun picking out with Gail um, 11 photos about the community house in the very, very beginning. So we'll start with those, and when each photo comes up, I'll just tell you a little bit about it. So we put the lights off, and then I've got my flashlight here. Flashlight. Okay, so we start. All right, here we go. This is a 12-acre parcel that was owned by Mr. and Mrs. Julian, and it was on the market for $12,000. And they sold it to the Women's Club in 1949 for $6,000, and that was going to be for the community house, where the community house was going to be built. They paid a down payment of $500 on it and $50 a, a month to pay off the debt. So the community house was an idea that had been formed by the Chamber of Commerce and handed over to a group of very uh, vital women who had a lot of vision and a lot of energy. And it was the Women's Club that was established in 1948 that did a lot of the groundwork of raising the money to get this building going. So let's have the next picture. I love this picture. <laughs> this is uh, Dorothy Bomey. I know this is Dorothy. Yeah. And um, Mary Sto Sofer. Now, Dorothy Bomey, Bomer is the one in the middle. In the middle with the shovel, and her, her friend Mary has the mink stole on. And they are plant, helping uh, Harvey uh, Anderson, who is the fire captain, plant some trees. Now, um, Dorothy Bomey was a very vital person here in the canyon. Her husband, uh, Mr. Bomey, I can't think of his first name, he was the Harry. editor. Harry. Harry, thank you. Harry Bomey was the editor of the um, Topanga Journal, the newspaper that was going at that time. She was a very fine lady with a, a determined will, gracious manners, and she was the one who, who spearheaded the women's club, and it was the women's club that got all this stuff going. They raised money to pay off the debt so that they could build this house. Okay, then let's go on to the next one. This one and the next two or three shows the construction of the uh, community house. This is the foundation. The construction began in 1952. We had an architect who drew up the plans. His name was Kenneth Swift. He was from Beverly Hills. And there was a structural, a structural engineer, Harold King of Sherman Oaks, and then a local excavator whose name was Jerry Hanks. Very active, Jan remembers him, very active in the community, raided the site. I've never met any of these people, but I feel as if I know them from all the years that I've read about them in the archives of our historical society. Let's have the next one. Okay, and this just gives an idea of the kind of work that was going on to get the foundation built. And the next one, yeah, this gives a, 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 an outline of the building. And then the next one. This is one of my favorite pictures. I think somebody must have had a little camera one one day and just took a just took a shot, and it's so beautifully composed with all the kids and then the the um, uh, the pickup truck with the name of the people that were doing the work. The Topanga Drilling Company, Frank Malloy, and. Who else is see? I can't read it. And I'm, Jan can't remember. But, but these were the two important men in the community. And that kind of uh, work has continued on over the years in this community to get this house together. Now, let's go on to the next one. Okay. 
this is an, another um, work party. And um, some of these people, some of you will remember. One is Jerry Hanks, and then there was Albert Hoyt. Who in this group remembers Albert Hoyt? Can you remember? Yeah. He, was, um, uh, he was the postmaster for many years. I knew him, and the community knew him. He, he was a, a brilliant man with an, what is it? What is it, kind of a memory that you remember everything? I, didactic? <laughs> anyway, he had a good memory. <laughs> and then the other person is Melvin Penny. I'll tell you more about Melvin Penny in a moment. Let's move on then. All right. Now this is a wonderful picture. This is a group of women who were the officers, probably, of the Women's Club. There are no names written on the back of this photo, unfortunately, so I can't tell you who they all are. However, the woman on the left, thank you, <laughs> is um, Catherine Penny. And she was a very, very important, hard, hard worker to get this house going. And then the woman on the far right, second from the right, is Mrs. Bomey. So this, must, this picture must have been probably in the late 70s, maybe uh, rather uh, 57, 58. Uh, again, there, were, there was no date on the back of the picture. But the point that I want to make is that the hard work of getting this all together, raising the money, making the monthly payments of $50 so that the, the property was owned was done, I think, this is my point of view anyway, by this important group of women. Now let's move on. Okay, this is a wonderful picture. This is one of four that we have in the archives, and we'll see a couple more later on in the, in the film. This is the interior under construction, and the, the brick, we had a brick drive in the, in the late 50s, and uh, the community were asked to, um, the community members were asked to pay, I, I can't, perhaps a dollar a brick, something of that sort, so that the bricks then were bought and that money helped pay for the construction. And in 1958, the loan was finally paid off. In 1956, the roof was completed. In 1966, the cement floor in the main room was completed, though the kitchen floor was still dirt. And I can't tell you exactly when that kitchen floor was, was um, completed, but it was. But it was, uh, the, the cement floor was paid um, by the proceeds from the Strawberry Festival, and we'll get into that a little bit later. So th this, in essence, is just a, a little tidbit of information about the history of this house. There's so much that I could tell you about it. We have wonderful materials in the archives that can go into great detail about the people who were instrumental in getting this house going. It's, it's, quite, it's quite a long and interesting story. I've often hoped that there would be somebody in this community who would come into the archives one day, spend time looking through all those materials, and then write a novel about this community house. I think, it, I think it would be a fascinating story. So if there's anybody in the audience who is interested in writing a novel, come see me or Eric or Todd, and we can give you all the materials to get you going on it. Now, I'm gonna, we're going to have the last photo. We're going we're to fast forward up to the 70s, or early 80s. The last one. Oops, sorry, I forgot we had two. Oh, this, is a, this is another one of the construction. I hadn't realized we had two going. Okay, then the last one. Good. This, this takes us up into the, uh, the days of the ballpark. And this is a whole nother era of new people who, <coughs> after... Um, Richard. 
after um, the pennies uh, got tired and the, the old guard got tired and, and were replaced by the new guard, and Jan Moore is going to talk about that. Then there was a whole new uh, group of people that started improving the community house. And then after that group, there's another group and another group. So that's my point, that these, this community house keeps going with new people, new construction, and new, new ideas. One of them is sitting right here. And one of them is sitting right here. Who is this? Yeah. Oli. Oli. Where, uh, oh, Oli Guns. Yes, I, I had a delightful afternoon. Oli Guns came to visit me with his daughter, and we had fun talking about <clears throat> the well. And that's a whole nother story. Perhaps we can have a, another program about uh, the well, who dug it, and what happened to that well. So anyway, that's about all I've got to say. So now we'll have the film. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. There we go. This is the one you narrate. Yeah, that's rough. Anastasia, that's right. Yeah. Oh, I think. Yeah, really. about the community house. It's, it's an institution like no other. The canyon's always been interesting. I mean, if sociologists want to study a real microcosm of the world, they should go to Topanga. I think the idea of being kind of out in the woods and not really too far away from anything appeals to a certain mindset. And they, they come to Topanga. And if there's a fire or a flood, it's kind of a, a self-pruning society. If people can't take it, they leave. And if they can deal with it, they stay. You know, most people come up here and they last a year or so, and they go. But he says, the ones that stay put down roots and their kids stay. That's really important. Oops. Sorry. Oops. That's really important. Many of the kids that grew up in Japan either come back a lot or stay. Now, how many communities do you know like that? so many volunteers who worked so very hard uh, and there were so many meetings and that's what we did that was our life it was also some of the most enjoyable time that we ever had and uh, you know and the volunteers were just really terrific they really were and people really did come together days, remember we're talking like 50 years ago, women stayed home and men worked. So most of the women, men were out of the canyon. There wasn't, you know, too much business in the canyon. And so the women ran the women's club and did most of the work and the volunteering and everything else. And the men were out of the canyon, came home and they didn't want to go out at night and do stuff. Of course on Saturdays and Sundays they came and built the community house. Times were different. And not better, just different. Going back to that era, the building was up, the walls were up when I first saw it. There was no roof and there was no floor. They did raise the money to put the roof on, but more, some people mortgaged their houses to come up with the money to put that roof on. That's how serious they were about it. This canyon has supported that place pretty well since the gift of the property. 
I got dragged into the Lions Club, kicking and screaming, and then I said, well, you know, it's kind of fun. The main purpose of the Lions Club in Topanga, beside the fundraising activities that we did, was to support the community house. Aside from being very involved in the uh, uh, with the women's club and the advisory council and all that stuff, there were ultimate weddings um, or endless, I should say, weddings and parties. Um, some of the weddings were pretty bizarre. The TCC events were numerous. <laughs> We, I'd say, but it was really mostly me because I was the one who had more time than Richard. And uh, it, it was just, you know, check the restrooms, stock the restrooms, uh, you know, make sure everything was in order and the preschool would meet. And then uh, after the preschool left, then it had to be mopped and uh, I would check on the mopping or whatever. And, and then it was always making sure that everything was in shape when groups were coming in and checking up on them afterward. And um, most of the stuff we did was volunteer stuff. To tell you the truth, if I go up there, I get hives. <laughs> I have swept that floor a hundred times. I have helped to put the chairs away a thousand times. I never want to do that again. <laughs> We had more fun with Canyon Capers. It was a variety show, fun little skits and stuff, you know, with all, all Canyon talent, you know. Some talent, not so, but that was fun. And we raised money, not a lot, but some, every time enough to buy a little bit of this or a little more of that or some paint or uh, more cupboards. About 1986, we started working on the idea of a ball field. And um, Tom Hogson had figured out that maybe with a little bit of quiet sculpting, they could uh, get uh, room enough in there for a ball field and uh, manage to do it. So then it was work party after work party after work party. Richard, every single weekend, now Richard worked the full you know, a full day every week, and he spent his all of his weekends working on the stuff for the ball field in the community house, and as a result, so did I. And then, of course, there were work parties that went on afterward when we had to put up the fence. You know, everything was a step. You put up the fence, and then you, I mean, you put up the post for the fence, and then you put up the fence, and then you put up the the uh, netting that went up above that, and that was all stuff that had been donated from some used golf course, and it was all in various shapes and pieces, and you had to, have to be spliced together. So, you know, a lot of people, a lot of time, but a wonderful experience. So it all started with uh, a guy named, I guess it was Burke Hill, who um, had a Topanga Days operation going when I first came here. He would drive up and down the streets on the day of the event and say, put on your hammers and saws and, and come to Topanga Days. This is your day. And he'd get a loudspeaker on that truck and drive the whole canyon crazy. And we had you know, a very informal operation going. And then um, Catherine Penny decided that uh, it would be fun to do a strawberry festival. We started doing an increasingly complex strawberry festival. And that's when Jan Moore decided that maybe we ought to find another way to run that operation. So she and a bunch of friends of theirs formed a group called the, the uh, Topanga Creek Yacht Club. And everything they did was kind of a joke. But, but they were serious about doing Topanga Days, so they went back to calling it Topanga Days, like Burkell had. The Topanga Creek Yacht Club and then Trans Topanga Airlines, my son Mike thought of, um, Ski Topanga was Jimmy Gaines's, and then Topanga, London, Paris, Rome, and um, whatever else ones we had. But Topanga Creek Yacht Club was the beginning of it and the most fun. We sold them at Topanga Days. There was uh, t-shirts and sweatshirts. In the long run, it, it was a good thing because Topanga Days grew the way that the expenses were growing. The Moors did it better every year, and they asked the Lions Club to help them with the games. So as the years went on, we streamlined it and 
Um, the game's evolved. The community house needed money. It was in debt. The women's club was in debt, having put in the new road and the roof, and had borrowed a, a good deal of money and needed a way to uh, raise money other than... We did dinners. We did bake sales. We tried everything. Uh, and finally, we said, well, why don't we have... Let's try something called a craft fair. We have all these artists in the canyon. Why not a craft fair? So we had the first um, Topanga craft fair. I think, I think it was 73 or something. And uh, my friend Myra Shegloff said, uh, you need more and better crafts. Lois Mason came and said, you need music. So the next day, it became Topanga Day's Country Fair. And just grew from there. So that was either 73 or 74. And uh, it just got bigger and bigger and better and better. We had all these Robin they zany contests. And they were, it was like the horse pucky chuck, one of my favorites. And um, the lemon eating contest and the cracker whistle. You know, we had everything from the, the popcorn punt to I mean, you name it, it was just anything dippy that people could think of. The parade started out as the Topanga Times, down at the bottom it says, you know, Topanga Days, and um, we want to have a parade. If you want to be in the parade, show up at the post office at 10 o'clock on, uh, I guess it was Memorial Day, Monday Memorial Day, whatever it was. And so I went down there at 9.30, nobody there. I went, oh shoot, you know, but just before 10 o'clock, horses, bicycles with flowers and crepe paper, and by gum, we had our first parade, and it just grew from there, of course, and, you know, people came with, I mean, they invented floats. Oh, geez, we had fun. and some people are school teachers and they mix with the musicians and the artists and the actors and the nuts. And we all get together and have a party. <laughs>
memories of what you have when everything is done, let's face it. You know? Will, the squabble forever, but they'll come together when, when there's a perceived threat to the group, which is, like I said, a, a real study for any sociologist who wants to see a microcosm of the world. <laughs> Janice, your turn now. What? Your turn. Oh, my turn. Oh, uh, I can I have your light? I'm getting old. I can't see. No. I can't. Oh well. How many people in this room were born before 1931? Raise your hands. Yeah. Okay, and how many people have lived in Topanga, or lived in Topanga before 1954? Oh, oh, quite a few. That's wonderful. Okay, well, most of the things that Tom Mitchell put in here, I put here because a lot of the things are things that just stand out in your mind and memory. Talking about Lee and Richard, remember, I remember the first caretaker who was here, a young man named John. I can't remember his last name, but we remember I came here after all the hard work had been already done. Uh, it's just that there was a big debt to take care of. The land had been paid off, but the road had been realigned. 
uh, into its present configuration and paved because for years there was nothing but dirt and when it rained, mud here and the road was mud. But um, the debt had to be paid off one way or another but, and we, that's why Topanga days, we, we tried everything to raise money. Uh, like the, everything, most everything that I was going to say has already been said by the video, so I won't belabor too many points, but I do want to tell about the caretaker, John, who, after we'd acquired some things, some pots and pans for the kitchen and things, and we'd had some petty thefts, John pulled his um, camper shell little truck out back to kind of just at least be a presence. And one dark night, John heard noise coming from the kitchen. So he didn't turn on a light, but he slipped out of the camper shell, and he note came out and noticed that the door was open. So he went over and he reached in. I noticed you have two doors here now. There was only one there. He reached in, flipped on the light, and there in the kitchen, five coyotes, one standing on the, one standing on the table in the middle of the room. <laughs> So the next caretaker was Steve Nelson, who is still alive and well and playing music in Seattle. And then Lee and Richard came, and the hardest working people that ever lived, I swear. But, but that was, I just wanted to remind you about the coyotes in the kitchen. So I don't know why I thought that was funny, but I did. And, see, and I told, and I, I was remembering the first time I came to a women's club meeting, Dorothy Bomey was president. It was in the early 60s, and uh, the building was up, the floor was in, the lot was mud, and uh, the thing I remember most, though, was if you needed to use the facilities, you went out through the kitchen, turned right, and there's a four-hole outhouse. <laughs> Do you, everybody remember the outhouse? <laughs> yeah, well. That was a little primitive. I didn't come back for several years after that. <laughs> but then we uh, see we... Uh, oh, one of the reasons that we um, had to do all these fundraisers to raise money is that the insurance companies had redlined the Santa Monica Mountains and called it a conflagration area and wouldn't loan money. So you couldn't get loans. But for a long time there, then uh, they, it was declared illegal to redline, and the women's club, before I became active, uh, borrowed the money to realign the road, as I said, and build the bathrooms. So there was that debt to be taken care of, and that's one reason we started Topanga Days after we tried everything else, because the Strawberry Festival was winding down. Like Tom said, the ladies were getting tired. I mean, they'd, they'd done all this work for all these years, for heaven's sake. They deserved it rest. But let's see, what else have I got that was, was funny? Because we had so much fun. <laughs> you know, and the canyon capers were another thing that we're just, uh, we were beside ourselves. Remember Harriet, Harriet Swenson and Evelyn Jensen on the piano, and, and you know, those were the days. The jug band, uh, arts and crafts, oh, and then in about, after Topanga Days had been running for a couple of years, um, we got a call from the sheriff's department, you have no permits. Uh, no. We didn't know we needed any permits. It's our place. We're a charity. We're just raising money for ourselves. But, you know, until Myra and I, in the hall, met a representative from the sheriff's department, and he said, uh, you've got to have permits. And I said, well, what if we don't get permits? <laughs> and, and he said, well, then I'll have to arrest you. <laughs> and I was about to cry, but Myra says, call the media. Oh. And that ended that, and we all trooped downtown and got all the permits we needed. And <laughs> but that was, that was pretty exciting times, right, Myra? <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, and, uh, what year was that? Oh, I think that must have been about 76. We, the Topanga days have been, we'd been, the first one was, we just had, because we needed the money, somebody said, well, let Topanga's for artists, we'll have an arts and crafts show. And after, for the debriefing after that, uh, 
uh, Myra says we've got to have more and better arts and crafts. As a matter of fact, we even had Timothy Leary pushing LSD out there one time. Uh, but uh, And Lois Mason is the one who says we've got to have music, and I think it was Linda Hendricks who said we've got to have some stuff for kids. And so we that that's how Topanga Days just started, because we needed the money. You know. 76 is when... Is what? 76 is when they started, possibly when they started permits and well that I, I am I truly am not really sure Myra might remember better than me but yet somewhere in there because we 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 topanga days a couple of years when when a public spirited citizen called the county and said those people don't have any permits <laughs> and uh, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So, but anyway, we got our permits, and I assume that everybody is still getting permits because, after all, the the ladies uh, who had done all the hard work before I showed up had already incorporated the club as a 501c3 charity, and that's that's how we were able to get permits. Plus, the fact that you own the property, so that was that was a good one. And what else did we have here? Did uh, boom. <gasps> Dorothy Reich is here. Do you remember Dorothy's Bud Bar was always over here in the corner? And we had a big sign, Dorothy's Bud Bar. And do you remember when Norm Krauss sold us or gave us, I think, the big portable refrigerated bar that was always out in the front there? And Hank Donatoni, remember Hank Donatoni, uh, what always manned the, the big bar out there. It had four spigots for beer. All we had was Coors and Bud. But people would come and say, uh, well, what kind of beer do you have? And Hank would say, what do you want? <laughs> and they said, well, uh, Lowenbrow. Oh, that's the spigot. <laughs> Did that for years and, and nobody ever, nobody ever complained. The other thing, we, one time we tried a beer tasting contest and we charged people five dollars to join. And there was this whole table of people tasting beer in these little cups, you know. And for the tiebreaker, we had this mystery beer. Well, the mystery beer of all things was Lone Star. And well, we didn't realize that one of the guys who'd signed up was from Texas. So when the mystery beer came out. He went, oh, yuck, Lone Star. <laughs> no more mystery. I, that was just, you know, but that's the kind of stuff we did. We had the best. Of, and they're right about the T-shirts. The T-shirts we did with the Topanga Creek Yacht. Leona Maston was the one who thought up the Topanga Creek Yacht Club, and Mike would did the TTA. Ski Topanga was Jimmy Gaines's. When I went down to have the shirt printed, it was Ski Topanga. You know, I thought, oh, we'll decorate this. So I put a little snowflake on it. I had no idea that snow was a euphemism for cocaine. <laughs> that shirt sold like hotcakes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but that's about it. But but the mud puddle was hysterical, except for the fact that people would come up here and wash up, and it clogged up the poor old septic tank. You know, we had that was another thing we needed money for us to build a better septic system. After that, that was the mud. But I think, oh, and as far as the um, grand marshals for the parade, there Will Gear. Uh, you saw Billy Preston and Robin Williams. Michael Horse and Billy Gray, I remember. You might remember other people, but but then when Bert and I left in uh, 91 to go up to Carson City, Nevada, until he passed away in 99. And, uh, but the the memories of Topanga days are many and varied and wonderful, so. But, and Chuck, do you remember anything else that, that might be fun? Well, the, the tug of war was always. The tug of war was a wonder, yeah. Amazing. And, and then the music that where the ball field is now, there used to be a giant oak tree down there. Right? Uh huh. And is it still there? That's where, that's where all of the all bands were. Yeah. Some phenomenal bands. Yeah. The early 70s that were down and playing there. I think I, my first to Peggy Days, I remember I must have been about 11 or 12 because um, we would stay, uh, Ronnie Orr and I would stay overnight up here oh. in the projection booth oh, up there, just so we could be here first thing in the morning. 
Yeah. Yeah, Randy Renner was our neighbor, and Shirley Sanders, who was a strawberry fan, was too. And uh, Randy Renner and the Roadrunners, and then the Grateful Dads later were in here. And, uh, but, you know, I mean, there's so many memories, and every memory brings more memories. But it's so nice to be back and, and see the place. Yes, which one? Remember the best dressed chicken? Oh, the best dressed, yo, oh, we had the best dressed chicken. Did you win it? Three years running. <laughs> <laughs> And we, we had chicken, Yep. And we had the weed arrangement contest. Remember we had the weed arrangements on we didn't have to buy flowers to decorate. We had everybody arrange weeds. And oh I, it's, the what? Rugrats. Rugrats. Oh yes, we had the racing rugrats. We had a had a, a long a carpet and we had little kids on one end and their parents on the other saying, Yeah, come here, come here, come here. And, and the one the one that crawled up first one I, I, I'd forgotten about that <laughs> oh. oh that's right yeah trying to keep the beer cold it was terrible yeah and the thing I remember was one year after the tug of war, the guys who won, that crazy guy who's getting the fight staff, etc. I forget his name, was insane. Which one? Which one? <laughs> 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 Which one? He was the craziest one. And his team won, so they were supposed to get a 12-pack of ice cold beer. Uh-huh. And I didn't have a 12-pack of ice cold beer. So I had to glue the table, drunk. Did did they really care whether it was lukewarm as long as it was beer? <laughs> oh, they were mad. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, I, know, I remember the square dances were fun. Remember yeah. that that wonderful couple who used to come and do the square dances? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I remember they used to always use yeah. the place. Yeah. And we have a place. Yeah. And we have a life before, so everything was going on. Yeah. yeah, it was it was a th it was a three day party. I tell you, it really was. But and I'm glad to see that that the the Topanga days is still going. I remember I was telling Myra that that when we did the first arts and crafts fair, she says, "Well, you know, these arts and crafts fair never last over six or seven years." And how long has it been? Forty something years now. What? The what? That's right. We had we oh we had the big roast beef, yeah. right? And then we would have a square dance, and then everybody made the kitchen doing the dishes from the dinner, and yeah. yeah. I had I I found out that the pancakes that I was like I'm stuck in the brain. You got stuck in the. Yeah. 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 Well, I can remember one parade where we were, we were, uh, Will Gear was in the back of a pick truck, pickup truck waving benignly when uh, the highway patrol drove up next to uh, Pat Maston was driving the truck and he says, he says, who's in charge of this mess? And Pat Maston said, Chamber of Commerce, back at the parade. <laughs> and, and, and so the, so the highway patrol and looked at each other and went went to Woodland Hills. <laughs> so, so yeah, yeah, we had a good time, and I'm glad to see it's still going on. But the Topanga spirit just doesn't die. You got to keep it alive. Just just have a good time. You know, do your best and have a good time. Do you remember that? Was did you do the Tootsie Doo, the Tootie Doos? That was Kathy Obedian, I think, who did two titties. So, yeah. Anything, anything? Oh, what, Gerlinda? Yeah, I mean, it was a little white cap for the kids in Topanga, too. This is 
probably the first time they were allowed without parents to go along the entire boulevard on their bikes and skates and all that. I mean, my kids, that's, that's their biggest memory from Topanga Dam. Yeah. We live in Highvale, so the elaborate water blasting that went on in Highvale, where we had actually like lines of water hoses underneath <laughs> the road through the, through the gully, and so we could spray the parade from both sides. Yeah, I, w- I was gone it was by then. Fun until it got out of hand. <laughs> I, I remember the young man on the unicycle. Remember him? Yes. Young man. He was he was wearing a shirt and shoes. <laughs> I think I think we could probably go go on and on right. all night. But I'm looking at the clock, and I know that Oops. a lot of us like to um, go to bed sometime. But we <laughs> but <laughs> Jan is wonderful. We all have wonderful memories of, of our times here at the Topanga days. I know that um, Eric would like to speak, and then I'm Kelly. So we've got a couple more speakers before we wind this up. So how about you? Yeah. Um, My dad became a member of uh, Topanga Lions Club in 1959. And uh, he was a builder up here in the canyon. And he was advised by Hal Rolfe, a local realtor, (laughs) that uh, it'd be a good idea to join the the Lions Club. Well, my dad had a pretty strong English accent. And so when they were going to do the announcing for Topanga Days, uh, Piner, who uh, built cabinets up in the post office tract, had one of those VW buses that's a flatbed truck in the back, you know, a little cab up front and flatbed. And they mounted a big speaker on the roof. And they put my dad in there with the microphone. He's going, Topanga Days, come to Topanga Days. And I go, all the roads all around here. And, it, and uh, he had a good time doing it. But he was, he, anytime they needed an announcer, my, my dad would do that. And what was interesting is that, is that the Lions Club was kind of centered out of the American Legion, which is where Froggies is now. But they had taken over from what it originally, of course, it had been the elementary school. And as Cub Scouts and Boy Scouts, we met down below in those little bungalows that had been classrooms. Uh, And that's where Topanga days were. But it always was kind of tied to American Legion. And these were interesting times. Uh, 59, 60, 61, you got to remember there was changes, big cultural changes that were happening. Um, There were things scary in the world, like the missile crisis, various things. My dad ended up not building as many houses as he thought. He was building more fallout shelters here in the canyon. And a lot of people felt that if there was an atomic war, that you'd have a better chance of surviving up here in the canyon. (laughs) So it's always been a place that that offered a retreat or a, a place to hide for people. Going way back to the time, the reason it's still got an Indian name is because the Indians could hide here. Um, <laughs> yeah, and during the Great Depression, you've got the Okies that came up here. We, we had a big Okie contingent that came during the Great Depression. And so, and blacklisting all the Hollywood people that came up here. So there's always been a place that you can retreat to. But what was interesting is there was a real possibility there would be a division in the canyon because we had the Bob DeWitts, uh, the uh, the Bohemians and the Beatniks and later hippies. Um, but we had the old school like that was operating out of the American Legion. And so having Topanga Days down there had a totally different spirit. And when it was going to be switched to up here. We never had Topanga Days down there. Yeah. It's called Topanga Day. Yeah. Topanga Day. I think oh, Topanga no, Day. We, Topanga Days has always been here. No, there was a thing. There was an event called Topanga Day that they had done. That's right. Was the it the Legion? The Legion had it? I think it was the yeah. Legion. Yeah. Oh. And through the Lions Club. So oh. my dad made the transition, though. And what we found out is that suddenly, instead of being kind of isolated from the community, it drew on the whole community. And, and that was interesting because 
people were building this voluntarily. And my dad was a builder who made a living doing building, but he came up here in 59 and 60 and 61 to help at different times. With, and I was looking through the old pictures, hoping I'd see a picture of him, but I, did, I didn't see one. But it, there was a difference in the community feeling and the people kind of pulling together and the differences between the people not mattering so much as they mattered down on the boulevard. Once you came up here, there was kind of a unity. And uh, so the community part of community house is, is a really important thing and it was magic and uh, um, since then I mean I, I look back at that time and I'm going you know it could have gone a, a lot of different ways but coming up here and having a place that really was for the community that didn't have a commercial basis to it that didn't have an, another organization that it had its own agenda but literally was just for the community gave kind of a freedom to the people and um, the spirit is still there <laughs> you know that's really interesting um, thank you that's very interesting. <laughs> Uh, uh, well said, Eric, and I think the, the, when you bring up that there had been, uh, and Randy said it was called Topanga Day, yeah. yeah, I think a lot of us have forgotten that. If, if you read your historical uh, society uh, history, it will be there that what, I think it was two years, and then there was a strawberry festival, and then there was to, uh, Topanga Days. So we really had three festivals, and a lot of us have forgotten about that. But thank you for bringing it up. You know, it's been such a lovely evening and um, time is running out and Kelly is here to wrap this up to talk about what's going on right now in this community house that we have enjoyed hearing about the history. Eric, do you mind if I show you? Yeah, or right. no, here. Of course, it's here. You can have mine. Mine, mine, mine. This is perfect. Okay, good. Okay. Okay. I'll be brief, I promise. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention is we now call it the Baby Derby. So in Topanga Days, yep. Baby Derby. And um, something exciting, so I'll start out with Topanga Days. This will be our 44th annual Topanga Days in 2017. How many? 44th. And uh, we are in the process of beginning our meetings. You're all invited to come and join us to help plan Topanga Days if you'd like. <laughs> One thing we're going to add is a foot race to start before the parade. So we're going to add a 5K, and we're determining the course. We had, remember the toughest son of a gun in the canyon contest we had to race, James won it one year, that came became the Topanga 10K. The 10K. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. We had the Topanga 10K for years. Yeah, so we, we thought we already have a built-in audience along the boulevard, so <laughs> why not have a bunch of runners sure. start us off? So we're in the process of working that out with Caltrans, the sheriff's department, uh, the police, <laughs> permits, permits, permits. But um, our vision for the future here includes uh, a lot of things, and it's so inspiring to see that the, everything is possible. You know, yeah. someone stood up here and said, "Well, let's build a community house," <laughs> and, and we're just going to enhance it. Um, we're looking to add a sport court and a, and a diversified sports program. Right now, we only have soccer for our youth, but we're hoping to add. Um, I know that in the past there had been there has been a t-ball program, and um, maybe introducing. You know, unfortunately, Unfortunately, in our schools now, children aren't learning how to play simple games like dodgeball, softball, baseball, volleyball, badminton, things like that where we could provide that here at the community house. Um, as I know everyone's still wearing their jackets and coats, <laughs> we'd love to add heating and air conditioning. Um, and just to give you a ballpark idea, the number that we've gotten returned for that is $90,000 for central air and, and heating in this building. So we, um, we have a goal, and I think that it, it's far in the future, but it's totally possible. Um, and uh, we're going to be adding dedicated storage to around the property so that we don't have so many. We, we're, we'll be eliminating 
what used to be the children's shed that had been dedicated for the preschool. The green shed. The green shed. The green shed shed has to go because we'll be adding a senior classroom um, adjacent to the Penny Room. It'll be added um, hopefully next summer. We're in the process of of going through the permitting and planning departments and and discussing with the fire marshal and um, we've applied for those permits so hopefully that will be those will be coming soon we have a children's organic garden that's just down in the lower part of what we call the underground and we're hoping to expand that and we're as we have always had a parking challenge but we still have to add or hopefully we'll be adding some parking spots and grading and um, something else that came up earlier was that we have a, a caretaker on site now who has, uh, I know many of you know knew Joe Pelleggi who's moved on he ha- is getting married and has bought a house in Simi Valley. So Joe left us late last year. <laughs> and I'm not, I'm not, his replacement, I'm not sure if he's here tonight or he's working, he's very dedicated. His name is Jerry Seimer. So if you see Jerry around, <laughs> he already has many fans here. And he and his son Henry will be, uh, have taken up residence and um, we're looking to replace the caretaker unit as it is a converted construction trailer. It was really never intended to be a residence. So that's another thing that we're looking to make an enhancement for in 2017. So as many of you know, this, the in recent years, the community houses had sort of a tumultuous past, but we're looking ahead and building, um, building our future together. And it's really inspiring to be on a board with so many dedicated volunteers and, and to see everyone here this evening dedicated to the house as well. And, and you know, I just want to remind everyone that we're all part of this great wonderful gem of Topanga so please do renew your membership today (laughs) (laughs) Gail has a question Uh, Gail has a question (laughs) can you tell the good people how they can become a member of this amazing community house yes we've added a few different websites the easiest way to do it is to go online is that right Bonnie yes so, so to go online, and there are three websites you could use, and they all go to the same place. We've bought the URL Topanga Community Center dot com because that will help us as we apply for grants. We had run into many hurdles because some places said you are a 501c3, but you're a club, and we're like, well, we're a club, but yeah, we're dedicated to our you know, our community. So we're at the communitycenter.com, communityclub.com, and topangacc.com because that covers both bases, and they all will redirect you. And it's very simple; just a few clicks of a button, enter your credit card. You can also become a recurring member if you choose if you don't want to have to think about your membership you just know you want to be a member or you could do it for just one year why is it important to be a member of the community (laughs) (laughs) your tax dollars do not go to supporting this wonderful facility it's the only place in Topanga where we can have a meeting of this size and um It's the only place where we have the kind of history and enriching experiences for our youth as well. So it's it's important to keep it to be. I mean, I think everything that we've done, we've seen this evening, is a a testament to why it's important. So. So Okay. Thank you. Um, All right. So quickly, a couple things. Yeah, let's give her a hand. I want to thank everybody. A um, couple things. Um, you know, I've tried, I've tried, I've tried. The tables and chairs do not put themselves away. Um, so we need your help. Um, so um, next, um, Kelly, you're up. Um, you have three minutes to select for the community house any picture or pictures from these pictures you want for the community house. Because after three minutes, I'm auctioning them off. Oh, okay. So go okay, for it. Okay. Start looking. Do, do, do we have like one of those TV clock Three things? Of them? Um, but the raffle, the raffle, excuse me, Gil, the raffle. As last I heard, there was only three, five people in the raffle. So it's a $49 book, it's a $5 ticket. This is the man if you want to get in. Right now, you have a one in 
one six chance of winning. Okay. okay. Um, okay. Take them right now. Anything that's left, I'm auctioning off. So just grab them. No, no, take the whole board. They come as a set. Grab the set you want. Okay, rosemary and sage on the tables. Please take it home. It's real. Okay, yes. Mm, oh my God, you should smell it. It's amazing. Um, okay, raffle. Uh, we're going to raffle in a couple minutes. So tonight's the last night to buy a book on sale, or you can throw five dollars in and see if you win the raffle. Um, uh, what else? That's about it. I want to thank everyone that volunteered. There's about 10 people that helped put this on, maybe more. So I want to thank everyone for, for helping. It's so important. And that's it. No? Oh, I'm going to do the raffle, I guess, on the microphone. Okay, so here's the raffle coming up. Um, oh, i got to pick a ticket. Okay, I'm reaching in. I'm reaching. I'm not getting anything. I'm turning it down. I'm trying to get a ticket. Okay. All right, here's the raffle number. Last three digits, 627. All right, come on up and grab your book. Congratulations. Okay, auctioning pictures. What pictures have not been taken? Uh, which, which ones are yours? You're just gonna take one. Okay, so who wants? All right, so here's a picture. Anybody want to bid on this picture? Starting for five dollars. Do you want these beautiful prints? Five bucks takes it home. Do you want it? Okay, five dollars a choice. Um, Bonnie, can you hang around for a few minutes? Because I want to do the donation. Cash. Um, more than five dollars. Um, all right, uh, other pictures. Anybody want any of the other photos? Let me know. Thank you.